How many of you remember Gary Coleman? You seen on the screens here? You remember that face? What are you talking about, Willis? You may remember or recall that. Are we getting a sound here through? Okay. Uh, we may re- remind you that uh, Willis was, you know, talking all kinds of things, and Gary was constantly the character saying, what is going on in this world? What are we talking about? What's going on? What's the conversation all about? You see, today's text is actually asking the very same question. It's asking us to stop and think about what it is that is going on in the conversations all around us, and more importantly, what's going on with the conversation within us, that inner conversation that's going on in your life. You know, that conversation that goes on, that's constantly there in your mind and thought, that is sometimes vocalized or expressed. You know, we have that inner voice, and then there's that outer voice. Sometimes we get those confused, and that inner voice slips out to be the outer voice, and we say, oh, I didn't mean to say that, but maybe we did mean to say that, because that's what our belief is. That's what we're expressing. That's the conversation that's going on within our heads. Now, you may encounter those people who talk to themselves. Now, we see it a lot. We go to the grocery stores today, or we go to the shopping mall, and you see people walking around talking. Of course, uh, they are not crazy. They have got their headsets or their phone earbuds or whatever it may be. And we get so confused because we think, wow, today's world is full of people who seem to be just crazy, talking to themselves wherever they go. I love it because sometimes when I get caught talking to myself, I just go, hey, i got to hang up right now, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, it just makes things a whole lot easier. You know, we just kind of comfortably slip in. You know, when you realize, you know, you're walking down the grocery store aisle, and like, dang, I forgot. Oh, excuse me, I, I'll call you back later. Yeah, uh, you know how it is. We can just kind of get along with that and just let it kind of pass by because we don't want anyone to think we're crazy. But maybe those people who are talking and giving voice to that inner conversation are really embodying the wisdom of the ages. Because many times the inner conversation needs to be given the energy of voice and spoken out to speak faith, to speak that which we believe, to give voice to those things that we really affirm and we hold dear to our hearts. Jesus was one who spoke and affirmed that which he believed. He spoke it out in clarity and the miraculous happened when he gave voice to an inner conversation of an inner knowing. Yet sometimes we've got some inner conversations that we don't want to give voice to because they don't really match with what's going on with the desires of our heart. And that inner conversation we don't realize is really a creative cause. It's creating something. It's creating the world around us. It's creating the circumstances of our life. And that's why we need to look and examine what is the healthy self-talk. What is the healthy conversation that we're having? What is the healthy dialogue that we need to express within? What is the healthy mind process of conversation going on in this head that brings about a clarity that really will manifest the desires of our heart? Because we cannot be torn in two different ways, ripped apart when we say one thing and believe another, believe one thing and say another. We get caught within this dynamic that seems to be going nowhere because we may say, I believe I'm successful. Not really, but I believe I'm successful. Not all the time. I believe something and that we're not always living it out to its fullest. So let's engage in some creative self-talking. I would like you to, first of all, do this. Think this first. I am blessed. Think it. I am blessed. Now say it. Let's say it together. I am blessed. How about, I live in continual blessing. Think it. I live in continual blessing. Now let's say it. I live in continual blessing. How about we think first, I am blessed to bless others. Now let's say it. I am blessed to bless others. You see how we change conversation when we first put in mind those words, and then we express it, we bring life to it, how important it is. Because we may say, I'm blessed, and then we have to really say, wait a minute, do I think I'm blessed? Is that the inner conversation that's going on? If I think I'm blessed and I'm in continual blessing all around me, is that what I'm voicing? Is that what I'm saying and expressing to the world around me? And if I really believe that I am blessed to bless others, then as my actions is everything about me, projecting that very truth. 
You see how important it is that we have this match. For we know over and over again here at City of Light, we've emphasized this beautiful passage that says, as a man or woman thinks, so he is. So exactly what you think, that's what you are. This is the scripture unfolding for us, the wisdom of the ages, because what you're thinking you are, what that conversation is that's going on in your head, is exactly what's manifesting in the world around you. If you believe it and you say it, how wonderful it is then to express and give life to those words because that's what transforms and changes the dynamic of the conversation. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 that he put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Wow, let's explain that one because that seems like a lot of terminology. We say, what are they actually saying there? But to put off the old way of thinking, the old man, the old woman, the old you that you were. Because you are experiencing a wonderful transformation in your spiritual walk. Behold, I make all things new, the scripture invites us to understand. That God is taking us to a new place, to a new understanding, to a higher level of, of clarity within our spiritual walk. And we've got to let go of some of the old thoughts that we've had before. The old thinking, the old way of looking at life, the old expressions, the old phrases we may have said. Because sometimes we don't realize that what we say really is what's manifesting. What we're speaking is what's creating the world around us. Oh, but you say, Pastor, I was just in jest. I was just joking. I didn't really mean it. I say all these things that say, you know, I'm stupid. I'm a mess. I'm a failure. I'm not very good. But you know what? I don't really mean it. Wait a minute. Do we? Because quite often what we say, there's truth in that jest. And so we have to be very clear about the words that we've chosen and maybe let go of some of those old ways of expressing how you live your life and embrace something new. So what might be some of the things that we let go of, those old ways of looking at our life and talking about who we are, what we do, and how we uh, manifest things within this world? Because to change your world, to change the dynamics around you, You've got to change your mind. Well, we know that in Scripture because that's the whole born-again experience, correct? Jesus said you must be born again. What is this born-again experience all about? It's about I was going this way, but I make a change and I'm going that way. I make a 180-degree change. It's not just I change the direction I'm walking. I change my thinking. I change my outlook. I change everything about the way I look at my world. I'm born again. I'm born anew. I have the chance to start fresh. And that's the beauty of the scriptures unfolding for us. You see, everything is a manifestation of this mental conversation that's going on. And I want to emphasize this. To try to change your world before changing that inner conversation is counterproductive. You're going to say, I'm going to go out today and I'm going to make uh, a, a wonderful world. I'm going to be the revelation of God. I'm going to be all those kind of things. But if that inner conversation says, mm -mm, ain't going to happen, it's counterproductive. We have to bring into oneness, into unity, that inner conversation, the thoughts that are going through your head, that they match with that which you're voicing and speaking out into the world. It has to be a sense of coming together in this oneness. Because Jesus spoke about this in so many ways, and he spoke and taught us this wonderful principle. So let me give you an example of something that could be very helpful, and I found to be very helpful for me, is that, you know, when we're dealing with this issue of separation, and we're struggling and feeling many times that we're separated from God, we may have been taught a world of separation. We may have been in an environment, a world of separation. We may come to churches and see them an homage to separation theology. You know, places where in some churches the Holy of Holies is here and you don't go there. Only holy people do. Or only the priest stands here. Or only the minister stands here and you don't. So there's this separation idea that some are holier than others. And there's this idea that we may see all through our religion and our traditional spiritual experiences, the concept that God is distant and I am not part of that. And only holy people can be even walking close to God. Even then, they are distanced from that God. You see, this is where we want to change our 
thinking because all of Scripture says that the invitation is to live as if you are one, living in oneness, living in an understanding of the divine power and presence in you, working through you, all around you, and always for you. So here's a great little spiritual practice. When you get up in the morning, spend seven minutes just saying over and over again, I am one with God and all that is God. Now, it's wonderful practice. I have to say, it changes your whole inner conversation. If you've spent seven minutes just saying this, walking around the house, I'm one with God and all that is God. I'm one with God and all that is God. And you're making breakfast, I'm one with God and all that is God. And you're doing the laundry, I'm one with God and all that is God. And you're turning the lights on and making the bed or whatever it may be that you're doing in your morning rituals, I am one with God and all that is God. And everywhere I go, I'm saying this over and over again for seven minutes. Seven is the wonderful number of completion, wonderful sense of perfection. I want you to get this in so that you begin to voice and it begins to change this inner conversation. I'm not separate from God. I'm not living removed from God. The divine presence is within. Jesus spoke about it over and over again, yet somehow in our world religions today, we get the idea that God is without, somewhere out there in space, and we're dealing with a being somewhere out there where the divine presence is within you. It is your consciousness, your awareness, the awakening that you're called to. That's the divine presence of God. And now, what a wonderful way to begin your day to say, I'm one with it. Everything that is of God is I am one with it. I'm not near to God because near success, a separation. I am one with. And how beautiful that is to think that there is no separation whatsoever, that the divine power and presence is now working in and through you. Now that changes that inner conversation for the day completely. You see, Jesus gave us this wonderful example of being one in all ways. He prayed that beautiful prayer that's so often overlooked, uh, speaking of I and the Father of one, and let the disciples, let the followers of this world, let those followers of us in the world also awaken to this powerful truth that they too may be one, just as you and I are one. How important it is that we get that and we understand that. And he said unto them in Luke chapter 2, 49, How is it that you sought me? Didn't you know that I must be about my Father's business? So Jesus, in his sense of saying, I am one, I live now the Father's business. I live the business of this divine source, this presence within me. I live its work. What's the business of the divine source? What's the business of God? What is that business? It is to mold the world into God's likeness. For the work of God is this divine to be revealed in us. And that's our work, that we are there to reveal to help to shape this world, inviting it into this wonderful understanding that they too are one, everyone is one, and that we live in this wonderful oneness, and that we live out this likeness of God, and how important that is. For the Bible says, be ye imitators of God as dear children. How do we imitate God? How do we imitate God? Very simple. Call things that are not seen as seen. God is the wonderful essence of creative voice that calls things that are not yet seen to be seen. Isn't that the creation story? The very essence of God says, let there be light, and there was light. Calling things forth that were not there to be seen, that were not seen previously. And so as we walk now in this world, we become imitators of that very essence of God. And that's what's changing our inner conversation because now I speak those things that seemingly are unseen as seen. That changes everything. Because now I say, you know what? Today I am successful. Oh, you're not successful. Yes, I am. I speak that because that's the way I see the world. I see it unfolding from this perspective and I speak my prosperity. I speak my blessing. I speak my health. I speak my wellness. I speak it as if it is unfolding right here and now and it is for me. How important that is. I love Joanne and Connie. They're already speaking things into existence. They're speaking something that's not yet seen. That's a trip to Italy. They're already planning that trip to Italy. And I love this kind of conversation. It says, we've been doing our, our investigation of different cities and places we want to go. 
when are you leaving? Oh, not till next year, but we're already claiming it. We're speaking it out. We're, we're actually that which is unseen. We are now claiming it to be seen, that we will be going to Italy. How wonderful it is when we begin to speak that way in our day-to-day -day life. We speak out claiming the unseen to be seen. And that's how we become great imitators of God, revelations of God. That inner speech is really so important because the Bible says every idle word we shall give account of. Woo! Every idle word. And sometimes we are so flippant with conversation in, like we said earlier, in, in jesting and, and in our humor. Uh, but you know what? We're going to give accountability for that because every word is a creative word. It's a powerful word. And it's, we've got to be held accountable for them. For these words, the Scripture says, you'll be justified or condemned by the words that you speak, by the professions of your faith. Because these words that you express go out into the world to create and shape your future. And how important it is that we understand that what we need to speak from is that which is shaping the world that we desire. So it's got to match. Do you desire health and wellness? Then speak health and wellness. Do you desire the blessings of God to unfold in your life? Then speak the blessings of God in your life. But people want to say constantly, well, Pastor, can't we just be real and speak? I got a lot of pains. I got a lot of poverty. I got a lot of sickness. I got a lot of issues. I got a lot of problems. Can I just talk about all those things? Yes, you can. Just know that that's where you'll be in that place. You'll be stuck there. So the invitation of the Spirit of God invites you to go beyond that to unfold a new reality, to be creative in the new sense, and to do it right now. For the Bible says that now is the day of salvation. Now is your moment. And it only matters what now is done, what is said right now, what you're doing in this moment. What are you thinking? What are you voicing? How are you expressing it? That's what really matters because that's what's shaping. Our word is made visible, and this is the life that we bring our word is now unfolding for us that which we desire. These mental conversations, they are simply creating all of your circumstances. So what we desire without, we must first see it within. Oh, wow. Let's take a moment in your meditation time and see within. Do you see yourself going to Italy? Do you see yourself in success and prosperity and blessing? Do you see yourself health and wholeness? Do you see yourself with a job? Do you see yourself with those answers to your prayers? You've got to see it first. You've got to exactly acknowledge it first. That shifts the conversation that's going on in your head. Otherwise, you'll always be saying, I don't know if I'll ever get the job. I may never get to Italy. I may never make these, see these things happen. But when we begin to see it first, it's, this is a practice that shapes that inner speaking. So we begin to take a moment to just imagine. Imagine. You know, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. You see that phrase tossed out quite a bit, but let me tell you this. Faith is believing that which is not seen. And the hope is really your imagination. When you hope, you go, oh, I hope... I hope for Christmas I'm getting this and I'm imagining, oh, under the tree is going to be a new iPad. Oh, I hope I already imagined it there and I'm engaging in that. And I want to invite you that faith and imagination and love, all three of these things are so important in your life. We've got to engage in the wonderful spiritual exercise of doing some imagining, of hoping for the wonderful promises of God to unfold and imagining them as if they already are working in your life. So spend a moment and begin to change or practice the work of art of inner speaking by imagining first. I imagine the desires of my heart unfolding for me. I see them. I see them as completed. I see them as finished. I see it all coming together. I see it working. You know, uh, my partner and I, we bought a new home, an uh, 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 older home, but a new home to us a year and a half ago. And the roof man came by, uh, Fraser Roofing is one of our neighbors, and he came by to look at our roof. And he said, you know, as neighbors, we want to you know, look out. I'll give you a free estimate about your roof. And he said, wow, you guys kind of need a new roof. And... Uh, I uh, said, you know, it's a little bit problematic here. You've probably got about a life of maybe 12 months left on this roof, and that's about it. 
And uh, I'm like, okay, I just couldn't really afford it. But he said, well, you know, uh, would it work on my insurance? Could I make an insurance claim and, you know, see if I could get a new roof? And he goes, well, let's see if your insurance... Nah, he said, it's just, it's right there on the cusp. And I said, well, you know, maybe we got to pray for a little bit more rain and hail, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, all I began to do was saying, I'm getting a new roof. I'm beginning a new roof. In fact, I referred uh, to someone else, the same roofing company, so that they could get their new roof. And they got a new roof, Joanne and Connie. And other people in my neighborhood, I referred them to them, and they got a new roof. And I said, I'm getting a new roof too. I'm getting a new roof too. Well, three weeks ago, I got a new roof. You see? And the insurance company came on board and says, yes, there's enough wind and hail damage. I said, wow, when do we have wind and hail? <laughs> I don't know and I don't care, but I put it into imagination. I put it into visualization. I began to speak it out. I began to say, this is what it is. And you know what? I got a new roof and the insurance company paid for it. How beautiful that is when we see all things come together. So the practice of the art of inner speaking is so crucial. It begins with faith, hope, and love. That faith that says this, I believe. That hope that says this, I envision, I imagine, I see in mind. And then the love that just says, I love the divine presence unfolding in me. It is the all good. And I know that I walk in the all good. You know how beautiful that is to say, I walk in the all good? Well, you know when we read the Bible and it talks about heaven, and I can remember as a child these descriptions of heaven, pearly gates and streets of gold. I never saw a story about green grass or beautiful flowers or trees. I just heard pearly gates and streets of gold and mansions. And the Sunday school teacher would have these little flannel graphs. Okay, I dated myself way back in the olden days. And they'd have little cutouts and there would be a picture of heaven all glistening in gold, golden buildings, gold and everything, streets of gold. And I kept thinking, wow, how garish. You knew I was gay back then. <laughs> how gaudy, how garish, you know. This has no one some taste here, you know what I mean? This can't be eternity. This can't be heaven. It's just too gaudy. It's just overdone. You know, it's too much, you know? Uh, it's one of those things where you just said, you know, this can't be streets of gold. Who wants to live in a place of just constantly everything is gold, gold, gold? Well, it's simply a metaphor for us to understanding that in the divine presence, heaven, here and now, I'm not talking about when you die, I'm talking about the heaven that is here and now. The divine presence is all about walking on streets of gold. What does that mean? Every footstep I take is my putting my foot down on prosperity and blessing and goodness. Streets of gold. I'm walking streets of gold right here and now. I am walking it right now. And all around me is this wonderful opportunity for me to experience the divine in a wonderful way that we think about it. Wow! Can you imagine? That just changes everything. I'm walking in the goodness of God because God is good all the time. All the time God is good and that's what I'm doing. I'm walking streets of gold right now. Woo, look down here. The pathway before me is all goodness, all blessing, all prosperity. That's the divine promise for our hearts and our lives. Yet we bought in to an inner conversation that says, that's too good to be true. Mm -mm. God isn't good all the time. There's some times when God wants to punish. God makes, it makes you suffer. God wants to cause you to have trials and tribulations. And we bought into this crazy concept that God is out there every single day looking around and saying, hmm, can I punish Alan today? Maybe I can make Stephanie's life a little bit more problematic. What can I do for Anne here to make her suffer today? As if that's the kind of divine essence of goodness because God is good. Good is good. Love is good. Love is perfect. Love is this wonderful essence that knowing that you're walking streets of gold right here and now, every single day. Now, the prophet wants us to understand that how important it is that we merge together our inner conversation with these desires. When you read the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, Can two walk together unless they agree? Beautiful principle for us to really think about. Can two walk together unless they agree? No. It's really hard because you're walking with someone and they don't agree. I'm going this way. I'm going that way. We don't agree. How can we walk together then? You know, someone says, I'm walking fast. I'm walking slow. How are you going to walk together again? You don't agree, right? So that's the whole principle in our lives that when we say something, 
that doesn't match what we believe or when we believe something that doesn't match what we say, you're not walking together. There is this crazy confusion that's going on and you don't connect the dots. Because let me tell you this. Here's the great understanding. There are two gifts which God gave you. God gave you mind and speech. Mind and speech. Inner conversation, opportunity to voice that conversation. Give voice to it. These gifts are what create the circumstances of your life. So when we understand that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God, let's break that down. What is really the Scripture trying to tell us here? You heard it in John chapter 1 in the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. In the very beginning was the Word that was birthed from God, the voice that came from God, that Word spoken out from God. And that Word was the offspring. That Word was that which came from God. So it is the offspring, it is the Son. And then we find this analogy of the Father and the Son being one. So we want to understand that the ancients were trying to give us all these metaphorical ways of understanding a powerful truth. Your mind and your speech have got to come together in oneness. Otherwise, they won't walk together. They won't communicate together. You won't have success, and you won't see the manifestation of the desires of your heart. Your mind, your thoughts, are creating your speech. And your speech will affirm what you just think. When this happens, they're together as one. That's the Father and the Son. The, where the very like the, the text saying that the Word was with God and the Word became flesh. That word spoken manifested itself. It became into physical reality. So when we begin to say, I'm getting a roof, I'm getting a roof, I'm getting a roof, I'm speaking that which I'm believing to be true, I'm giving voice to it, and it unfolds. It's not magic. It's a spiritual principle of faith at work within our lives. I'm not creating something crazy that says, you know, wow, this teaching seems too bizarre, too good to be true. It is how the Spirit works within our lives as we begin to call forth the unseen to be seen. So here it is that we've got to be transformed. We've got to change those former conversations that we have. Put off the old man. I love this passage from Ephesians 3.20. It was my mother's favorite. I spoke a little bit about it last week, but I want to share again. It says this, God is able to do above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. That power is that inner conversation that's going on in you. God is able to do something, but if your inner conversation is at conflict, what you're doing is holding the hands of God, holding back the manifestation and the beauty of the divine unfolding of goodness. God is ever wanting to prosper. If you would go to the Bible and take a look at all these beautiful passages that speak of your prosperity, of God's intention for you to bless. God didn't mean for you to come to this earth to suffer and to go through a difficult life and to say, oh, this is what life was meant to be. I meant to travel this road of, of challenge and all kinds of problems. God intended for you to experience this wonderful prosperity and blessing. And it will unfold according to the power that worketh in you. According to the power that you begin to speak and release, that you begin to profess and begin to allow things to manifest within your heart and your life. Here's the thing. You've got to plant if you want to reap anything. You've got to plant first. You've got to place these seeds within your mind, in your consciousness, in your way of thinking. You intend to reap these wonderful blessings of the goodness of God, then you've got to change the conversations that are going on here. We've got to make this big difference. When we see the story of Jesus in the wilderness, there he encounters the adversarial consciousness that we call a devil or a Satan. It's adversarial thinking, things that are working against us. We find this story it says that tempter or that inner conversation going on came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, man or woman shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That mouth of God is that inner consciousness in you. 
you are now speaking the word and that word becomes flesh. That word manifests in you. You have to understand that when we realize that you're not living by the food you have, by the bread that you've eaten, by the turkey and dressing and sweet potato pie that you just had. You're not living by that alone. You're not living by that which you just put in your mouth, but you're living also by what is coming out of your mouth, the words that you speak, because that's what's creating the kind of life that you so desire for your life. So when we walk in fear and trembling and we're like, oh, oh dear, I'm really worried and I'm stressed and I'm professing all this worry and stress, you're creating that kind of world for your life. But when you're professing the opposite of success, we speak it out with great clarity. So take a look at the world we create for ourselves and for others as we profess the following. Think about how this would change your world. If you begin to say, I am a divine revelation. The world sees God through me. Wow. Now think about that, how that changes you and the world around you. I am a divine revelation. I am the revelation of God. I am here to reveal the majesty and wonder of the Almighty. And the world now sees God through me, through everything I say and I do. What a way to profess a consciousness that is manifesting amazing things. How about, I am successful in all that I do, for I know this is God's intention for me. Wow. I am successful. I profess it. But I know that this is God's intention. God has intended this kind of life for me. God has planned it, ordained it, desires it. For God's always wanting our highest and best. How about I'm filled with the divine love for myself and the world around me? I'm filled with divine love for myself? Wow, doesn't that kind of alleviate all those insecurities and all those questions about our own life when we begin to say, I'm filled with divine love, filling every aspect of my life. And I have a love for the world around me. I share this love liberally and all, in all that I do and say. What we hear today is Gary Coleman saying to Willis, what you talking about? What you talking about? Because the Spirit of God is asking you to put into check right here and now. What you talking about? What's going on in your head? Does it match your desires? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from that mouth of God. You are the revelation of God. What are you speaking today? What you talking about? Amen.